Hi guys, this is Wave618. It's the 11th of April 2019. We've just gone 20 past 4 in the afternoon BST. Um, so yeah, today we're going to look at Bitcoin. As well as that, we will have a quick look at Ethereum also. But there's plenty to discuss in today's video on Bitcoin. You'll see um, that I have changed my wave count. I'm going to justify why I've done that. It was a, an alternative count that I did provide in the past. I was suggested by uh, someone on Twitter. And um, but yeah, I'm going to explain why I've changed the count, and the main reasons is it justifies why we've clearly found this uh, resistance at this level. In today's video, we're going to talk about whether Bitcoin is bullish or bearish in the long term. We're going to essentially discuss whether this is the bottom or not. Um, yeah, so plenty of things to discuss, lots to look forward to. Stay tuned. guys all right so first things first let's talk about bitcoin so um yeah first thing i want to mention is that uh, i have changed my wave count so first of all this was w three waves down same as in my last few videos in my last few videos i made the major x wave a descending triangle which was an a b c d e finishing here and then our final three waves down was our wave y okay on the 4th of March, I did a video where I talked about an alternative count. And I have to say that is probably my preferred count at present. And I'm going to justify that in this video. And it's basically the count that you've got before you here. So that's where W is this three waves down to here. X wave is up to this point here. And then our Y wave is as follows. So this is our uh, of the Y wave. This is our minor W. And then we've got a, a running flat here to make the X. And then we've got a further three wave count down to make the Y. Okay. Now there's plenty of reasons why this is a, is a good count. Now, first of all, <clears throat> in order to determine W, it was three waves down. So first wave, second wave, third wave. And the way that can be calculated is using a Fibonacci projection. If we take our first wave, which is at this level here, do a fib projection, which means taking it back to its genesis using the fib retracement tool. And what do we get? We get our W ending at 1.618, like to the T. Okay. And then if we look at the same situation for the, if we compare this minor W and try and use that wave to determine where Y will finish, this minor Y here, we can use the same technique. So using this low here, we're going to take the price back using Fib Retracement tool, bring it across all the way to our tops. And again, absolutely to the T, we hit the 1.618. So this is what I really like. We've seen symmetry here with the 1.618 being hit twice in both WXY counts. Okay, so that's one reason. And I'm going to show you in 2014 how we saw exactly the same thing. So let's go to 2014. And this is the count that I've got here. So major W, major X, major Y. So to get our W, again, that's three waves down. So this is uh, three waves down to here. It's the first wave of the major W. And we, so we go from this level, Fib Retracement tool, all the way up to the top. And we come down to, so the W is coming to roughly around the 1.236. Okay. Then we have our major X and then our major Y. And the major Y is made up of a WXY. So we've got our, this is our W. So what we do, so for once we've got our W in, we can then project uh, the length of W to determine where Y will come to. So just coming across, so from the bottom of W, which is there, fib retracement tool all the way to the top, bring it all the way across, and make sure it's right on. 
So again, it's around the 1.236 that it found a bit of support. Obviously, you can see it breached it on the daily chart, but not for long. This was a, a you know, on the weekly, I'm sure this will be seen as a, a wick that came down and then shot back up. But it was all 1.236 in terms of the Fib level that was respond um, um, where support was found. You'd have to say it was the 1.236. So again, you see the WXYs using the same Fibonacci ratio, and you can see here. I'll come to the the pitchforks later, but uh, going back to current price action. So that's one reason why I like that count. Then what you get once you've got your um, first two waves, so this was our major W, this is our major X, and then we major Y. So using our first two waves here, we can look at the minor W, that's our first pivot at the start of minor W, second pivot at the end of minor W, and then at the end of minor X, we've got our third pivot. Remember X wave is this running flat here. Um, <clears throat> so I, I'm just take a look at the pitchfork. So it's a shift pitchfork. We found nice resistance here at the median line, went sideways, then we went all the way down, found support again, sorry, support here, um, support again at the low warning line. Then we ranged a little bit, you know, below the, um, the lower median line. And now we've come all the way through, absolutely flew through the median line because obviously we had been consolidating for a while and the breakout was you know, explosive, but we found now resistance at the upper median line, okay? Now, obviously the big question is, was this 3100 the bottom? Was it a WXY like the count that I've just shown you for 2014, 2015, um, where we've seen two WXYs with very similar um, very similar Fibonacci ratios between them. And on top of that, um, if we go on the weekly, pull up our simple moving averages, it's the 200 week moving average, the black line here, acted as very nice support here, and has acted as nice support again here. So again, are we seeing the same thing of a completion of a major WXY, with this being the major bottom, that is the big question on everyone's mind. Now, had there been a hell of a lot of volume coming here, I would have I would have to say yes, definitely this is the bottom. Uh, we haven't seen that uh, major volume come in. So if we pull up the volume here, it's not it's not major volume, okay? Yeah, we did see a big spike here. Um, even more volume obviously came in when we did our wave one, two, and then the third wave obviously had a lot more volume to it. To be honest, now that, you know, there's a lot more people involved in Bitcoin, I would expect, you know, to see more volume, but I have mentioned in previous videos, in particular in that uh, 4th of March video, that volume can be manipulated and there's plenty of ways that uh, the institutes can acquire Bitcoin other than on an exchange where volume is recorded. So they can, for example, get it directly from the miners or they can mine the altcoins themselves and Bitcoin. So um, volume can be misleading. So I'm not going to assume that this is not the bottom just because of the volume not quite meeting um, the criteria. So it's something we have to think about. Now, obviously, if we are bearish and we think we're going to see lower lows, well, this could certainly be a turning point. Why? Because we've got a WXY completion here. So the count for that, best seen probably on the four hourly. So this was our first wave, and I've mentioned this would look like an ascending triangle. So if we just labeled that, so this would be our, our A wave, B wave, C wave, D and E, okay. So if this is our first wave, our W comes up to here, X finishes at this point, drag it across, and we've tested the 1.382, which is a very nice Fibonacci relationship for a WXY. 
and we've found confluence with this upper median line and price has come down. Where has it come down to? Well, so far it's testing the 4979, which is this dotted black line, which you'll know from my previous videos was a uh, an order block level. Just quickly zoom out to demonstrate that one. For those of you who are new to my channel. So I had been talking about this dotted line being the top of this block of orders here. There's this consolidation that preceded. So this consolidation was clearly very key to this eventual big move up to 20,000. Okay, so it's not surprising that this level here at the top of the order block is being considered a significant level. And um, yeah, price is now at present finding a bit of support at that level, only on perhaps on the 15 minute chart if we look at that. So this is our dotted black line. You can see we've come down, we've tested this line. It's probably gonna act as some temporary support, but I do expect prices to come down to here, uh, come down below here rather. And um, yeah, going on the daily, the next target for me would, I suppose, have to be the this median line, okay? Now, obviously, if, the, if we're from a bearish scenario, this for me looks like the completion of a second X wave. So if we're saying this is a W, this is X, this is Y, this is our second X, and then we're going to see a Z wave come down further. Next level of support would be at 3000, which would be where we found resistance here and support here. Okay, that's the next key level to be tested. After that, you're looking at around 2500, which is the next Fib level, uh, and also the in the midst of an order block. But uh, yeah, that's if we're bearish. Now for me, I think it's reasonable to go short at this point with a target around the median line. However, I'm gonna look at the bullish count because as I say, there's a lot of resemblance to 2014 um, where this looks like a major WXY has finished and that could potentially mark out the bottom, especially when we've got that 200 week moving average, which is a very significant indicator to show that our retracement may have been complete so <clears throat> if this were to be bullish the way i see it playing out is either it needs to go straight up from here which i don't think it's going to do um that's one option but what i think is more likely is this going to be this can be a wave one here and then this could be a running flat now you're going to think this b wave looks hyper extended for a running flat so let me just first of all put some labels. So with a, in fact, let's delete this WXY just to make it clear the bullish scenario. Let's expand it a little bit. Uh, let's take the volume off. Okay. So the way, if it were to be bullish, and this is certainly something I will be looking out for, uh, I'd call this A. B and then C could come down to the median line and then go back up. Yeah, so typically in a running flat, you'll get a, a three, three, five count. So you've got your three down, three up, and then you'd expect a five wave impulsive move down, C wave, where I believe it probably, if it did occur, we'd probably test the median line before going up. Now let's have a look at what happened in 2014. Uh, let's go on. Yeah, daily time frame is okay. So the way it played out in 2014 is we got, when we achieved our bottom after our major WXY, we had a wave one up. And then it's look, looking like an A, B, was a, a th so this is your three waves down, three waves up, and then a C wave, five waves down, one, two, three, four, five, to form a regular flat, okay? Then your wave three came in. If we pull up volume, you'll see tons of volume eventually come in. So it's more so when we were starting to break out of the uh, this pitchfork. But you can see what happened, it found 
after the, this correction, this corrected price action, it found support at this median line. It used that as a you know a floor to to bounce off essentially, which as I say could be the same situation that we're going to see now. So we could be seeing this median line act as a floor for further for a further move up. So what I'm saying is if Bitcoin were to be bullish, this is one possible way it could play out. Wave one, A, B, C running flat, wave two, and then three eventually takes us out of this upper warning line and it's not gonna look back after that. Yeah, it'll just continue upwards and upwards. <clears throat> That's one way it can play out. And I'm very conscious of it. I'm not saying it will play out that way just because we haven't seen that much volume coming at the bottom, but it's something I am not gonna I'm going to be very aware of it and be monitoring price action very, very closely over the next coming weeks to see if that could potentially play out. And I'll be keeping you guys updated to see if that is looking like the, the likely scenario. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm looking out for if it is to be bullish. Uh, but at present, it's played out a very nice W, X, Y up to here, test the upper median line. Could certain, if it comes down below here, then I'm struggling to see how this could be uh, bullish, to be honest. Because if it's not a running flat, it can't be an expanded flat because uh, C wave would end up coming down lower than the, the bottom here. Okay, so either it, if it's bullish, it needs to continue going up from here, probably using this 4979 as support. And uh, the alternative is it uses this median line as support. So they're the two options for me from a bullish point of view. If this is bullish, that's what I'd be expecting to see. Um, but as from a bearish point of view, uh, if the median line collapses, then certainly, uh, I mean, yes, you could go short and take profits at the median line, certainly be very cautious at that point. And if we come down lower, yes, it could potentially come down, test the lower median line. As I say, 3,000 would be an initial target from a bearish point of view. The way I'm seeing it at present, the only trade that appeals to me is the move down to the median line at present, okay? As I say, this 4979 is the initial obstacle to get past um, just because it was the top of that order block. So that's what I'm looking for on Bitcoin. So I'm hoping I've explained the two scenarios, why I've changed the wave count. I'm sure you'll appreciate these um, the very nice Fibonacci relationships between the W's and the Y's here. On top of that, this has retraced. So if this is our major X. So the Y wave started here. It has retraced to the 0.236. Okay, so another reason we've got another bit of um, uh, resistance at this level. So the X wave can typically retrace to the 0.236. Often it will be the 0 0.382, 0 0.5. Can often can always also be the 0.618. It's very variable with the X-wave, but the point is it's hit a fib level, which is the 0 0.236. So another reason why we're seeing a bit of a turn at this level. Uh, okay, so I did mention we'll have a look at Ethereum also. So let's have a look at Ethereum. So Ethereum, as you know, uh, it's a little bit different in the sense that a huge amount of volume has come in at this uh, pivot low here. And since then, <clears throat> price has been coming up, looking rather corrective to me in the way, in the fashion that it had come up. And I was looking um, for how it may come down lower, which it is now starting to do. It's finding resistance at this median line here. Now the question is, how was this pitchfork drawn? And essentially what you do for an inside pitchfork, which is the pitchfork that I've used here, you look at the last major swing, so this from the high to the low. That's, so your first pivot will be at the high here, second pivot at the low, and then you look at the first part of the correction. So if this is the first part, yeah, then typically the last part of the correction, well, it can even come up to the, the warning line, upper warning line here. But as you know, as we've been discussing in previous videos, this level is a uh, is significant resistance. This has acted as good support in the past. 
and now it's acting uh, so support here as well now it's resistance resistance and we're struggling to stay above it um, here so um, <clears throat> yeah so basically we got these pitchfork median lines here and you can see since our first three pivots are in price has really followed these lines very nicely if we zoom in a little bit you can see we came down to the median line then we broke through retested came down lower median line all the way back up to the median line range to the low median line and now we've almost we kind of got front, front run here with price rolling over just before it hit the median line again but uh yeah it's, price seems to be adhering rather nicely to the, uh, that pitchfork and the wave count for this which as i said looked like pr corrective price action i'd probably call this uh i'd have to label it as a wxy with this being w x y and you can see your, your clear three wave count there for the y wave and as i say initially short term you're looking for price to come and test this lower median line so those of you who are members of my course you'll uh, there is a video dedicated to inside pitchforks where i gave a few examples there um, but essentially you look at your, your your last major swing and then typically the corrective pattern following that is made of three waves so your final pivot is at the first wave of your correction and um, then the median lines help you determine where the final wave of the correction is likely to come up to and in different situations you'll see, often see the upper warning line when price hits that that is a really good time to look for a reversal uh, because there's obviously not many other uh, median lines beyond that so but here you can see median line which is a very significant line offering uh, resist resistance uh, in terms of where I think Ethereum may come down to, it's difficult to say. So as I say, this is looking corrective, but as I say, it could still be like Bitcoin, still could potentially be bullish. So, and if we were to look at it from a bullish perspective, I'd call this a wave one. And then I'd probably call this, it could turn out to be a running flat as well, but this is A, B, so three waves up for B, and C would be rather impulsive and could easily probably test this lower warning line and then would see a major wave three come up. That's looking at it from a bullish perspective. Short term, I'm just closely monitoring price action, initial target, lower median line. If we break through that, there's a trade on towards the lower warning line. All right, guys. Um, so yeah, I think we'll have to wrap it up. And if, uh, if that helps you to determine what's happening in the charts and uh, you've enjoyed the content, then leave a like. Um, yeah, any questions? I'm sure you'll have many. Uh, put them down in the in the comments. And yeah, I think we'll wrap it up there, guys. All right, take care.